Hey there, hi there, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond, welcome you to another Cutter Degrassiisms. It's not an unpopular opinion, and it's not a, a video for a list, it's just basically a Degrassiism. So anyhow, I did the top six characters from the graduating class of 2007 and the top six from 2011 graduating class, or what we call, or what's officially called the Emma class and the Holly J class. So today I will take a look, this video, I will take a look at the 2013 um, list. I had a um, thing. As I said, THC guy did the Degrassi uh, graduating class of whatever and then did like the main people and I chose six people. So for the 2013 class. Now a lot of people say this, is this the Claire class or no? No. This is one season before. This is the Eli class, is what I call it. So, of course, this might be a shortened video because I was not really watching Degrassi at that time. It was just like, you know, a lot of things going on. So, I don't have a complete knowledge of all the characters on the list, but that's, this is the best I can do. Okay. First off, at number six is Owen. Now, Owen, of course, was this kind of a bully. He was a giant bully. He was homophobic. He really hated on people. And the funny thing about Owen is that, you know, his brother will be in the 2018 class, in a sense. He would be in the class of 2018 video, but I think that practically everyone hated his guts. Well, and also Tristan didn't technically graduate because, you know, he was in that coma and the bus crash. He came out of it and got a um, um, high school equivalent. But yeah, I think a lot of people would not have voted Tristan that time. It was weird how Owen was so homophobic and he had his younger brother was. Well, if you remember Tristan, he was a chubby guy and then was tried to lose weight for a guy and then collapsed and then he still was skinny and all that. Weird. Number five is Katie. Now, Katie was introduced at Katie was this no-nonsense person. She liked soccer. She looked like she was going to be a Canadian soccer star, but injured her knee too many times and then took her mom's pain medication to try to deal with the problem. But then, you know, she had an addiction to that. She went to rehab and then she went to Las Vegas when Drew was going to marry Bianca. And, you know, she lost her college savings fund gambling and almost slept with a guy that kind of looked like the guy from Facebook, Zuckerberg. But she kept her dignity. But Katie seemed to be kind of pious in a sense. That she thought she was better than everyone else. Her personality just got people off the wrong way. You know, and we knew Katie's younger sister is Maya, who features in the list for 2018, obviously, because it's Maya. What do you expect? So, yeah, so Katie was just kind of a boring, kind of pushy. Number four on the list was Jake. Jake wasn't really featured in Degrassi as much, but then when Claire's mom decides to date Mr. Martin, that's Jake's dad, around the same time as Claire dates Jake, because, you know, Claire thought she could get past Eli, things were weird. And then Helen, dis Helen, a.k.a. Claire's mom, decides to marry Glenn, a.k.a. Jake's dad. It's messy because, you know, that means that Claire cannot be with Jake because now they're step-siblings and that would be incestuous, even though Claire insists on continuing it. But I think it's because, you know, Claire was desperate for a guy. Uh, Jake was part of a double standard. You know, Jake got away with a lot more than Claire did, but then, you know, they got rid of, tried to get rid of the double standard. Jake convincing, convinces Principal Simpson to allow his dad's roofing company to do something on the school roof, but it just wasn't that safe and all that. Jake, to me, was not really a good character. Number three is Bianca. So Bianca was introduced, what was it, season 11 or 12? Yeah, but Bianca was involved with Drew, and it was a bad relationship that Audra tried to break off Drew and Bianca. But Bianca is accosted by someone named Anson, and Drew tries to fight Anson, gets overpowered, and then Bianca finds out Decides, finds a rock and then smashes Anson's head with it, making him bleed out, killing him, and all that. Bianca loses her bracelet 
well, her and Drew were trying to run from the run from the scene, and then someone picks it up for her. Bianca manages to get Drew to take the fall for her for killing Anson. I mean, honestly, when I look at the Drew and Bianca storyline, I feel like Bianca was just using Drew like a fiddle. Not as much as, well, yes, but not as much anymore. But anyway, yeah, Bianca, Bianca, of course, Drew into taking the fall. Well, Bianca had a lot to lose. She was a member of a gang. The police didn't treat her that well. And, you know, Drew was worried about Bianca's well-being. So that's what happened. And then, you know, you know, Bianca was told by Fins, the guy who found her bracelet, saying that, you know, if you do everything for me, then Drew won't get hurt. So Drew decides to protect Bianca and try to talk to Fins, but then Fins decides to bring the gun to the prom to destroy Drew. And Bianca says, why did you talk to him? I had to. It's never over with him. And then once Fins shoots twice and striking Adam, now Adam t technically didn't graduate, so that's why I'm not going to put him on any of the lists. But yeah, Adam was well beloved, but yeah, he didn't graduate. He died. And then all of a sudden, you know, Bianca finds Fence's gun, wants to go after Fence at his hideout and shoot and kill him, saying this ends now. Thankfully, though, Drew and everyone else convince her it's not worth it. So Bianca will have to go deal with the police because of Fence's actions and all that. And Bianca starts to get better. She she does community service. She does do well in school. She even gets Audra to help tutor her and stuff. And, you know, Drew and Bianca decide to get engaged. They go to Las Vegas and all that, despite Drew's mom's objections. But, you know, Drew is weakened and all that. So Drew and Bianca almost get married, but then Drew finally wakes up saying that, I don't want to be with Bianca and all that. I mean, if my mom's okay with this marriage, I'm not. So Bianca goes to school, goes to college, and basically dumps Drew off, and Drew feels terrible about himself. I have the weird feeling that Mrs. Torres was responsible for, you know, breaking Drew's heart. You know, like tutoring Bianca, getting Bianca to dump Drew off. I think that Audra was upset that Drew would stand up to her. Yeah, something fishy. Okay, so that's number three. Number two is Fiona Coyne. Fiona was introduced in season nine with her twin brother Declan. Just causing a lot of trouble and all that. There was the promo that Fiona insults Claire and all that. But yeah, Fiona is Declan's twin. Fiona gets involved with some guys and all that. But then when Degrassi Takes Manhattan happens, that stupid season 9 movie, Fiona is upset that Declan's trying to move away from her and towards Holly J. Fiona can't stand Holly J. And then Fiona decides to kiss Declan. It gets into the papers as a way to get Declan to stay away from Holly J. And she doesn't want to lose Declan. I mean, twins have that connection. So, yeah, I like that feeling. Fiona, unfortunately, had troubles with guys, especially this Bobby guy who would abuse her and all that, and Fiona turned to alcohol to try to calm her problems down. She got abused. Her abuse trial happens with Bobby, and Fiona does get a little worried because, you know, the trial might take care of everything. So she drinks a little bit, but her culpability might have been questioned and all that. Fiona does have some problems, and Bobby does get charged. And Fiona wins the case. But Fiona's alcoholism was really terrible. Drew moves in with Fiona to try to get away from their problems and all that. And of course, Fiona is kind of the hero to Holly J because despite the fact that she was upset that Holly J was going to be with Declan and Fiona hated Holly J through core, Fiona helped Holly J get her kidney. As I said in the last video about Holly J and the kidney problems, that Holly J was told to she could get her kidney for $20,000 from Dawn because, you know, she had to be financial secure for her kids. And, you know, she has to take time off from her bank job. And Ella J goes blasting her, saying that that's the reason why you got rid of me, it's financial problems. Fortunately, Fiona, who, who after Bobby's trial, realized that Fiona doesn't need a guy to make her happy. Well, she does kind of rape Drew, as the Reddit community says, but anyway, Fiona has a crush on girls now. Fiona turned gay. She had the relationship with Imogen, which was probably one of the best um, lesbian relationships on the show. 
But anyway, yeah, Fiona decides to help Holly J out, give the $20,000 for Holly J to get her kidney because of buying one of Don's dresses. And I guess in a way, Fiona wanted to, you know, take it to Holly J and had a crush on Holly J. She actually kisses Holly J. But she doesn't disclose why she wanted to be with Holly J. And, you know, you know, it would have been nice for Fiona to admit her true feelings to Holly J. Even if Holly J dumps her, Fiona at least has the sympathy of knowing Imogen's there for her. So, yeah. And number one by far, everyone voted for it, was Eli. Eli was this dark, brooding guy who came in, what was it, season nine or ten? I think season nine he was introduced. Because I don't think he was season eight. No, I think it was season t not ten, isn't it? Nine or ten, I can't remember. But as is... You know, Eli came by, he was driving a hearse, you know, a funeral thing, a car, he calls it Morty. He had an ex who died in a car crash and all that. He was dark, brooding, a funeral guy, probably wanted to work with in funerals. He was an emo guy, if you will call it. He and Claire came together. I guess Claire wanted a guy after Casey was stolen from her by Jenna. And so, you know, Eli and Claire were together. Eli was upset over Claire's fears of his car. So he crashes Morty on purpose to get Claire to visit him in the hospital and all that. But Claire says that she can't be that person anymore. So it breaks off with Eli. Eli gets in a few relationships. You know, and then Eli forgets about Claire. And for some reason, Claire blasts him for forgetting about her. They've broken up, for God's sake. Eli has a mind of his own. Eli was bipolar. He was, he took medication all that. He wanted Claire around him. Eli and Claire were really toxic towards each other, as much said. That's how I forget. Eli was the one who found Cam's body in season 12 in the greenhouse. Now, of course, we see Eli's reaction and all that, but we don't know what happened to Cam, whether it was suicide, slashing himself, or even more prominent because it's in the greenhouse, drinking chemicals. And as I keep saying that in 2019, I was spending a summer at a garden center and learning about toxicity and everything about soils and like, you know, liquid manure and all that. So I know what I'm talking about. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, Eli had his PTSD and had his issue, his emotional issues get to him. Thankfully, Bullfrog, Eli's dad, Alongside Principal Simpson, help him get out of his funk. And he learns to be a better person, and that's great. Eli and Claire would be together and all that. Eli had his things. He graduated a year before Claire. That's why Claire's not in this thing with Eli. But the simple fact is that, you know, Eli goes to New York. He wants to do his thing, and Claire visits him every so often. And Eli thinks he impregnated Claire. Well, Claire was pregnant in season 14 and thought it was Drew's baby. But it wasn't Drew's. It was Eli. So Eli said he would take care of the kid. But then, you know, Claire loses the baby. And Eli helps Claire realize her problems. So, yeah. Eli and Claire forever, I guess. So that's all I've got for this video. I know it was short. But, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond.